Kubus, tell us uh, what you do briefly. You well, can. I teach um, translation at the University of Free State in Bloemfontein. Mm -hmm. um, we have an undergraduate program, a three years BA in language practice, in which we teach six fields of what we regard to be language practice. Um, so they would take translation, interpreting, document design and editing, terminology studies, human language technology and language planning. Everybody does all those. Everybody yes. in the undergraduate pro okay. program takes that. And then postgraduate we have a honours in which you can spe specialise in either translation, interpreting or language management. Mm -hmm. Then we have a structured masters in which you can specialise in one of those fields too and obviously okay. then dissertation masters and okay. PhDs. What languages so. are involved here? Um, we work um, in all South African languages. Um, what we do is we contract um, preferably accredited translators to assess the, 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 the translations. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had a student working in Persian, we sometimes have students working in French. Um, Are you in a department of what? My department is language management and language oh. practice. Okay, yes. right. So, so but you're an Afrikaner speaker, Afrikaans speaker? Afrikaans speak, Afrikaans mm. is my home language, so yeah. I, if I translate myself, I, I um, translate between Afrikaans and English, mm -hmm. and I have a bit of knowledge of Biblical Hebrew, um, okay. so I'm involved with a Bible translation project, but not on a large scale, very small and my Hebrew isn't good anymore. It's a bit rusty. Okay. You're also a co-organizer of, of the summer school. Yes. Here. Can you tell us something about that? Yes. Um, we started the, uh, the summer school last year in 2009. Um, it originated in our department um, between myself and, and Jack Kennedy and my colleague. Um, it, and, and then after that, we negotiated with Stellenbosch to, to be a partner. And our, our, our aim is to move it to other parts in Africa, mm. um, not to, to have it as a South African-based thing. So we're already in negotiation with the American University of Cairo and various other places on, on the African continent. Our idea is to ask questions about what should the research agenda be um, within our context. Mm. Um, what demands do the, does the context make on, on our research and how does that interact obviously with global issues in translation studies. Um, I think it's a, it's a very long term project. I, I think it's going to be a very slow one and maybe we would at the end find that there are no particular is no particular agenda. I don't know what we're going to find oh. at the end. But, but, we're but trying the idea to would be to try to see if there is an African translation studies? Um, no, I'm not sure whether that's where we want to go. Um, okay. I, I, I rather think that we, we want to ask questions about the, the historical, geographical, political, social context. And, and just at least make, make our researchers and students aware that the types of questions that, that are asked in the textbooks that they read may not be the same yeah. as the ones that, that we are involved in. Uh, it may be the same, but it might also not be the same. I'm not sure whether, whether we are working towards an African translation studies. I don't think that's... I'm not sure whether it's possible and I'm not sure whether it's desirable, um, but we'll see. Uh, rather, I think we're rather looking at an agenda to, to promote research that does not just copy um, other theories and other sets of data, but, but try to really grapple with our context. And we're also trying to, in a sense, institutionalize these ideas, because I think if you just have ideas without putting some structure or institution behind it. So the, this, this, the summer school is, is an attempt at an annual getting together of um, translation scholars in, in Africa to, to, to discuss this. We have also secured an annual um, 
edition of the, ling the South African Linguistics and Applied Linguistics Journal mm -hmm. for particular African translation language practice issues. Um, and yeah, at this stage, that's sort of the, as far as we can go with institutionalizing because it costs money and, okay. and that's part of our issue usually. Okay. So. Let's go back when you were 22, 23 or whatever. What were you doing? Where were you then? Um, actually, it's a bit boring, I think. Um, <laughs> um, at that stage, I, was, um, I went to university to study theology and um, then got interested in Biblical Hebrew and specifically the literature um, of the, the literary part of Biblical Hebrew. So I did a master's on um, sort of a focalization, um, the, the narrative theory of, of, of focalization, mm -hmm. which brought me, I think, into, into contact with perspectivism and, and a bit of postmodern theories. And then I did my PhD, well, that was a bit later on, on um, representation in Old Testament narrative text, where I worked on postmodern post, uh, theories of text and, and, and um, semantics. But at 22, I think I was doing my honors in Hebrew, Biblical Hebrew, and I was just immersing myself in a different world. Yes. Um, Where did you go from that then? Then I, I first went, did one year of, of theology studies, which I couldn't stand out, um, and then um, sort of stopped with that and then did my master's in, in, in Hebrew. Then went back to have another try at theology and um, completed it. Um, then I did a year of, um, we were still, com had compulsory military training, so I had to do oh. that. And um, then I started as a minister for nine years. Really? And yeah. um, that didn't work for a number of reasons. Yeah. The one being that the congregation ran out of money, so I was retrenched. <laughs> the other one, it didn't really suit my worldview, I think, and my personality. You're better as an academic. I hope so. I don't okay. think I, I'm not. I I I'm, don't think I was a I was a good minister, yeah. and I'm. I think the jury is still out on whether I'm a good academic. That time will tell that. But I'm I'm more happy that I can yeah. tell you. I'm more happy. The point was made yesterday by, I forget who, the argument was made that if a translation program has been successful in the African context, mm -hmm. it is that of the Christian missionaries. Mm -hmm. Would you go along with that? It's not really my field of expertise, um, so I'm, I'm, I haven't done research on it myself, but what I've read and, and what, we've, what I've discussed with my colleague, it's, it seems like it, for some reason, the, the the church manage the church managed to indigenize at least in some parts um, I think the question one has to ask is whether that's been done with state force backing up the mm -hmm. the translation and the, the church itself but I think my colleague said yesterday the interesting thing is that in South Africa all nine indigenous black languages were translated very early and they survived while the Khoi and the Sun and the Griqua languages were not translated into right. they didn't have Bible translations and those languages died so that's an interesting phenomenon that we haven't studied yet it's just an observation but we, w we would like to study it what about the status of those nine surviving languages now uh, what about the co the official language policy in yeah South Africa? Um, well, officially they are all on the same level, um, but in practice English is the, the, the dominating and dominant language. I think f for economic reasons on the one hand and maybe for political unifying reasons mm. on, on the other hand, um, there, there are development in those languages, um, but I don't think as much as we would like to, um, but then maybe as translators we're biased, we would like to have lots what, what, of... What do you think the role of translation is in that context? 
Well, I think at, at least it makes information available to people to partake in social structures, um, banks and, and, and um, you know, um, the income tax and, 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 and um, so on. So at, at least in that sense and, and on a very local level at municipalities, um, s some municipalities are, are going to quite a bit of trouble to um, to have text translated and to have interpreting in, in certain places. Um, so I think it, 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 it helps it helps people, it, it gives them a sense that well my, my language is, is important mm. and it helps people to partake. On the other hand, um, many people feel that if it's still a case that if you need a job you need to have it in English or Afrikaans. Okay. So um, the the it, the, the black indigenous language just sort of s mostly stays at an informal social level. They're not f yet fully developed as um, formal languages of education or higher education or banking or technology or whatever. Do you think that's going to happen? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm not. Language planning is, is in, 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 in policies. Um, aren't my, I'm not really that much interested in it, so I really don't know. What kind of translation research would you like to see? What would you recommend to people who are beginning research or looking for a topic? You, you're talking about yeah, in, yeah. in our context. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think a, a lot of historical research needs to be done. Um, for instance, um, how did the, the first Khoisan people talk to the, to the first Europeans that came here? How did the Kosa and the Sutu people talk to one another? Um, if, if, if we can perhaps try to understand some of that, it may help us um, understanding much of what's going on in our informal economies today and, and the informal um, ways that communities are organized. It may not help us much in terms of, you know, billboards and TV. I, I'm not sure whether that mm -hmm. may help, but um, understanding how communities organize themselves around languages mm -hmm. may, you know, may help us. So I think that's, um, we, we need research on that. I think we need lots of research just on a very linguistic level of, um, for instance, what would the translation differences be between, say, Sisutu and English in terms of where you put your adverbs and where you put your, um, where you use passive voice and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I think those comparative types of studies which has been done, have been done in, in European languages, I don't think we have um, enough of that. Um, and then, um, personally, but that's that's sort of my my hobby, which, which is, um, Maybe um, not a good one, but I would like to, to see students um, well s study um, sort of detailed facts about translation, comparing translations, but within a wider, I think, a sociological or ideological um, context. Um, I know it, it, it's, a, it's a debated issue. We've, we've discussed it this morning. and. and um, and yesterday, but I still think that <clears throat> living in a, well, whatever you want to call it, third world context, um, underdeveloped context, the, the sense of, of uh, um, uh, misalignment of power is, 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 um, is strong. And maybe we, we're overreacting to it. I'll, I'll still think about that. But on the other, other hand, I think part of what we are trying to do in education here is to give students voice. And, and um, so I would, I would like them to, even if they discuss matters of, of a very sort of minute linguistic choices, still to be aware that that's embedded in certain sociological and ideological implications. Um, so I would, I would um, advise, I, I would think students should, should do a bit of research on that. And then the, the other thing is that I think what, what we need to do is we, we need to study informal, the informal economy. 
You um, mean the non-taxpaying economy? Yes, right? yes. Okay. The the stuff that goes on in backyards yeah. and streets. And um, I I recently had a student doing a very little mini dissertation about um, informal advertisements that you get on the streets, where people would take the they would have a, a, a um, um, paper, a hard yeah. piece of paper, yeah. and then just with, with um, leftover paint with their finger, they would paint on their name and their phone number, yeah. and saying, well, I'm doing painting, and painting would be spelled wrong, and so on. So she did a sort of ethnographic study, found all these people, how much do they make a month, um, how much would they, would they like it translated to translate in, into decent Afrikaans, how much would they like to pay for it, and so on. So I think those types of things are the things that, that we need to be studying and um, because a lot of that is what's going on in our, in our context anyway. We have to look beyond the profession. I, th I think yeah. so. I, th I think, I, I try to work in two directions. On the one hand, I think our really formal side of the economy, we need to um, have well-trained professional translators that can be accredited, that can be world standard, that can charge high rates and, and, and that can see to the development of language and lead to that. On the other hand, I think there's a very basic um, survival level where we just need people to understand one another, to understand the doctor and not to take the wrong pills, you know. And for that you don't, obviously you need expertise but not necessarily a master's degree, I think, um, <clears throat> so that you can at least just survive life and the interesting thing is these <clears throat> the, the study that my student has done I don't think any of the people there had more than um, grade five in other words five years of schooling and that some of them couldn't write at all some of them asked people to do these for them but they made between a thousand and five thousand rand each month out of that which in South African context okay. is not bad so somewhere something is working, which we are not necessarily aware of, and which um, if you had somebody on a, um, on a level, say just after school, that can do a bit of language practice, translate, write, create a nice document for 50 bucks, which would be enough to live for a day or two, could do that, you could create work and create, um, serve a community. Um, so I, I think that's the that's sort of where I want to go, and that that leads me to that. What I want to focus on is sort of the development context in which we operate, and what is what is development, and how does it relate to translation? Much of the of of normal translation studies is done on literary texts, which are high culture, if you want to call it that, and I think we need to go to low culture. If, <laughs> if it's not an offensive term, I'm not sure. To, to, to really, because Africa, I think, is a lot about survival and, and for us to help communities survive, I think. Very good. So, Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> there we go.